Here I'd like to talk about a logic device called a counter. And counter are devices that will count in binary, either counting up in binary or counting down in binary. So here's a module that I named counter, and it just has one input, which is the clock, and one output, uh, count. And this particular counter is just a 2-bit counter, so that's the reason for the slash 2 here. So um, a counter, it will either uh, increment or decrement by 1. Um, at the time of the clock transition. So if you have a uh, rising edge triggered uh, counter, every time there's a 0 to 1 transition of the clock, it will either increase by 1 uh, in binary or decrease by 1 in binary. And over here, this is the uh, system Verilog code system Verilog code that models uh, an up counter. Okay, up counters are counters that increment by one every time there's a, a clock edge. So if you take a look at this, you can see. Um, you know, the name of the module is counter, and as I have over here, the input is CLK. Uh, output is count that's initialized to zero. And then within the always uh, flip-flop block, which is um, dependent on a positive edge of the clock. So again, this is a rising edge type of counter. Well, every time it enters um, this always block on each positive edge, uh, output count is just going to be incremented by one as you can see here. So since it's a two-bit count, um, it would just have these values. So if it initially starts at zero, as I have here, um, it would just count from zero to one. Once that first rising edge of the clock occurs, then it would go from one to binary two on the next rising edge of the clock, and then to three. And then once it gets to three, um, the next rising edge of the clock, well, it will just start over again and go back to zero and then just keep on going zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. Now, if we wanted a uh, down counter, uh, all we would have to do is just change this uh, plus sign here to minus, and now um, it would it would decrement every time, the count would decrement every time there's a rising edge of the clock. So if we stay with the initial value of the count being zero, it would go from uh, zero to three. Okay, it would, if you start at zero and you have a down counter, well, once that first edge of the clock occurs, it's going to go um, to the maximum value here. And then it would just go in this, in this direction for every uh, clock edge. So here's an example in Dr. Milley's book involving a counter where this counter, um, it also has a load feature where you can load it just like a memory register. Um, and it has this input up where when up is a one, it will uh, count up. And when up is a zero, when the up input is a zero, uh, this counter counts down. Uh, also, you can see it also has a reset. So let's look at this timing diagram. Um, you can see in the timing diagram and also in the description here, we're told that the reset is asynchronous. Okay, so again, asynchronous means that input does not depend on the clock. Also, it's active low. Okay, so active low asynchronous. Um, so let's see what our output count would be um, for this timing diagram that we have here. So you can see right at t equal to zero, right here, 
that the reset is asserted, that the active low reset uh, is zero, and since it's synchronous, it doesn't depend on the clock. So that means that the output of our counter to begin with is going to be zero. So in hex, since it's uh, eight bits in hex, we would just have a count output of zero zero since it's reset. Now I um made this a falling edge in the description. I'm pretty sure it doesn't say either. Um, just because we haven't done too many of these problems, these timing diagrams with uh, falling edge triggered, I figured I'd make this one a falling edge. And I also changed Dr. Mealy's problem just a little bit where I made this load input uh, stay one for a longer amount of time. So this is just my modification here in red. So since um, this is falling edge, we're looking at the 1 to 0 transitions of the clock. So uh, here's our first 1 to 0 transition. And you can see we're no longer reset. Uh, the up input is low, which means uh, we're counting down. So if we're starting with uh, all zeros for our count, and we count down 1, uh, remember when the counter is counting uh, down, uh, it's going to decrement by one in binary. So if you start at all zeros and you subtract one from that, well, that's all ones. Okay, just like when you have a two bit counter, if you start at all zeros and then you decrement by one, you go to all ones. So it's the same idea here, it's just that we have eight bits instead of just two bits. So that means that our count would be all ones, eight ones, which in hex would just be FF, right? Because all ones, um, as you know, four, four ones in binary is 15, which is F in, in hex. Uh, let's see. So then um, our next, uh, oops, we're over here. Our next um, one to zero. 1 to 0 transition of the clock occurs at this time and we're still counting down so we'll go from FF in hex to FE and then this next falling edge of the clock we're still counting down so we count down one more now from what we had, so this would be FD in X. Okay, now uh, here's the next falling edge, and during this time, well, we're loading. Okay, um, so the loading, uh, the load input is equal to one, which enables the load. So just like when a memory register gets loaded, when a counter gets read when a counter gets loaded it just takes the data that's on the D input and that's what now becomes um, your output so let's see at this time this is a uh, hex 3 4 so the count output becomes the D input of hex 3 4 okay and now the next falling edge comes along and we're counting down, so 34 uh, minus 1 will give us a hex 33. And then the last thing that happens is on this falling edge here, uh, the up input is 1, so we're counting back up, so we go back to a hex of 3, 4. Okay, so that's how these uh, general counters that can count either up or down and do loading and typically have a reset input, uh, how they operate. Now the last thing I'd like to go over is that often it's handy to do um, clock division, okay, to divide your clock down in frequency. So here's a module that will do that for you here's the black box diagram it just has a single input CLK and a single output uh, SLK that stands for slow clock okay, and I named this clock div for short for clock divider and this is the Verilog um, code that models uh, this clock divider circuit 
So before we look in any detail of this code right here, um, the basis three boards that we're using in the lab, they have a board uh, clock frequency of 100 megahertz. Okay, so that's 100 million hertz. And as you know, a uh, period of a signal is just the reciprocal of frequency. So if you take the reciprocal of 100 um, megahertz, uh, you get 0 0.01 uh, microseconds, which is the same as 10 nanoseconds. Okay, remember, nano is times 10 to the minus 9. So what that means is that um, one cycle of our board frequency is 10 nanoseconds long, which means that Okay, since the since the board frequency has a duty cycle of 50%, uh, duty cycle is just the amount of time the signal is a one compared to the period. So um, the clock frequency on the basis board, it's a one for half the period and it's a zero for the other half of the period. So that's 50% duty cycle. So if our period's 10 nanoseconds, it's low for 5 nanoseconds of that 10, and it's high for the other 5 nanoseconds of the 10 nanoseconds. So if we want to uh, divide the frequency of that board, freq um, that board clock, one way to do it is shown in this uh, Verilog code here, where uh, we set this parameter max count, and you can see the default value here is 1. But as you know from previous um, previous information that's been given in the lab portion of the course, you can change uh, the parameter that's in your lower level module. You can change that in your top level module of a structural design. So let's say, for example, uh, you change that max count parameter uh, in your top module to uh, 50 million. Okay. Uh, now here's our input clock, our output S clock that's initialized to zero. So S clock is going to start at zero. Um, now we um, make our uh, count, as you can see here, also initial value to zero. And we make it 30 bits. You can see here that uh, the most significant bit is the 29th bit. And again, we always start with the least significant bit of zero. So we that count output is 30 bits wide. And if you take 2 to the 30th power, it comes out to a really big number. <laughs> yeah, it comes out to over a billion. And if you plug that into your calculator, you'll get a number like this. So you can see it's really large number. So we can make our max count, um, you know, up to this number here. But again, for this particular example, we're making it uh, 50 million. And then within the always um, FF block, and you can see it's uh, sensitive to a positive edge of the clock. Well, we're just setting uh, count equal to count plus one. So every time we enter this um, always block, on the positive edge of a clock, we're just incrementing that count. So if we, s and then you can see here that we don't come out of this unless uh, count equals the max count. And when it does, we go into this um, this part of the, the code here, where now we set the count back to zero and we set S clock to uh, the inverse S clock. So what's happening here is that since we started with s clock equal to zero, all right, so here's s clock, all right, it's zero, and it's going to stay zero for 50 million clock pulses, right? Because it's going to take 50 million positive edges of the clock before it will invert s clock and then. Uh, go through this count sequence again. So effectively what happens is that um, S clock is going to be zero 
for 50 million periods of our board clock frequency. So we're going to have 50 million times 10 nanoseconds. See if you multiply this out, right, because this is just 50 times 10 to the uh, plus 6, so you'll get 500 milliseconds. So S clock will stay low for 500 milliseconds before the count gets back uh, set back to zero, and S clock gets inverted to a one, and now it's going to stay a one for 50 million uh, cycles of our board clock frequency. So this will be one for 500 milliseconds. So for an input of 100 megahertz, with this max count, this clock divider will output a 1 hertz signal, right? Because if you have a signal that's 500 milliseconds for half the period, and 500 milliseconds for the other half of the period, well that's a total of one second for our period. Right, this would be our period. And a one second period of course uh, corresponds to a one cycle per second or one hertz signal. So this is a handy um, piece of code here uh, to have because if you want to divide um, you know any uh, input frequency by a certain factor to get some lower uh, output frequency you just need to figure out what max count you need and since the max counts a parameter you don't change anything in the lower level module okay if you want to divide by some other factor you just change it in your top level module just like any uh, parameter that you use